I just love all of you. I want to say thank you to everyone who's here in person and for everyone who's watching over Zoom. Um, I was so blessed to be able to serve the last year and a half of my life in the Arizona Phoenix Mission. And it truly was the best experience I have had thus far. Um, and I just want to start off by letting you all know that this talk I'm going to share with you is my testimony. And if I say anything that touches your heart, please know it doesn't come from me. It comes from Jesus Christ. And he inspired me with the words that I'm going to say because he loves each and every one of you. Um, but I just want to start by reading one of my favorite scriptures. This is Matthew chapter 16, verses 25. And it is Jesus talking. He says, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. I know that this scripture is true. And I know that um, as we turn to Jesus Christ more fully and leave our worldly lives behind, we more fully realize who we really are and who we are always meant to become. And so as a full-time set-apart missionary for Jesus Christ and his church, I was so blessed to be able to see countless people lose their lives um, for Jesus Christ's sake. And I want to talk about just two people on my mission in particular, and I'm going to change their names for privacy reasons, so these aren't their real names. But um, the first one is John, and John's story started out by being picked up off the side of the road by a member, and he lived with that member for three months, and then he moved into a home in my area for people who are recovering from addiction. And the very first time we met with him, he accepted an invitation to be baptized, and he turned to Jesus Christ to completely change his life around, and it was amazing because you could visibly see the changes in him. Um, he was filled with so much peace, and you could tell that he truly began to realize who he really was. I absolutely bawled my eyes out at his baptism, and it was the, one of the most special days of my entire mission and of my whole life. Um, the second person I would like to talk about was Bob. <laughs> so Bob's father, he was a 79-year-old man, um, and he had not been active for a while. He hadn't gone to church for a really long time, and he was one of the very first people I met on my mission. So we would go to his house, and we practiced teaching the missionary lessons on him. And then eventually, he started attending church every Sunday. And then one day, his son, Bob, who was 59, moved in with him. Bob had a really, really hard life. He grew up in foster homes. He was into a lot of hard stuff when he was younger. He just had a really hard life. But he had an experience when he was younger that helped him to know Jesus is real and who he is. Um, and then one day we went over and we asked Bob if we could just start teaching him. And he said yes. So um, we started teaching him and eventually he accepted an invitation to be baptized. Unfortunately, after I had left the area, I had learned he stopped meeting with missionaries because he didn't know if Joseph Smith was really a prophet. But about five months later, I unexpectedly went back to my first area for three weeks. But it wasn't unexpected to the Lord. He knew what he was doing. And the first thing the Lord prompted me to do was to visit Bob. Um, so we visited him and had found out he had continued going to church for the past five months, and he agreed to meet with us again. On our second visit, we were reading in Alma 32 about faith, and there's a verse that talks about not laying aside the faith you do have because of what you don't yet understand. And so I asked him, Bob, do you know the Book of Mormon is true? And he said, yes. I then asked him, do you know that this is Jesus Christ Church? And he said, yes. And then I asked him, do you know that Joseph Smith was a prophet? And I was expecting him to say no, so that I could relate it to the scripture. But he said yes. <laughs> so that was really cool. <laughs> and then he accepted a baptismal invitation, and he was baptized just a couple weeks later. And I remember him telling me, growing up, you would have never thought that I would be baptized at the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And yet, here he is a faithful member of Jesus Christ Church, and I'm so proud of him. He's amazing. But there's a quote I would love to share from Elder Patrick Kieran, and it says, Jesus specializes in the seemingly impossible. He came here to make the impossible possible, the irredeemable redeemable, to heal the unhealable, to write the unwritable, and to promise the unpromisable. Jesus knows what we do not, and he knows who we're truly capable of becoming with his help. I know that Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ are the kindest, most loving, and most merciful beings to ever exist. And how do I know that? 
I know that because of the heartbreaking and gut-wrenching trials I have endured in my life and on my mission. One of my favorite scriptures of all time is Doctrine and Covenants, chapter 122, verse, or section 122, verses 5 through 8. And it is an account of the Lord speaking to Joseph Smith as he is imprisoned in Liberty Jail. He says, If thou art called to pass through tribulation, if thou art in perils among false brethren, if thou art in perils among robbers, if thou art in perils by land or by sea, and if thou should be cast into the pit or into the hands of murderers, and the sentence of death passed upon thee, if thou be cast into the deep, if the billowing surge conspire against thee, if fierce winds become thine enemy, if the heavens gather blackness, and all the elements combine to hedge up the way, and above all, if the very jaws of hell shall gape open the mouth wide after thee, know thou, my son, that all these things shall give thee experience and shall be for thy good. The Son of Man hath descended below them all, art thou greater than he. Um, and I love this scripture because we cannot know the sweet without the bitter. We cannot know joy without sorrow. It's just not possible. And I know that Jesus Christ loves me because he has done for me what I never had the courage to do for myself. And because um, he has allowed me to feel heart-wrenching pain so I could experience that much more joy. And my joy is full. I feel so much joy. And I'm just so happy because of him. And I just wanted to talk about probably the most significant experience of my mission. It happened three weeks into me being in the mission field. <clears throat> Sorry. I woke up to learn that my sweet older brother, Dallin, had committed suicide that night. And, sorry, I cannot see my words. <laughs> that is the most sorrow I have ever felt. And yet I know that the Lord was sorrowing with me. And my favorite story is the story of Lazarus. Lazarus was known in the scriptures as he whom thou, he whom thou lovest to Jesus. Jesus was in another land and he had heard that Lazarus was sick. He waited four days after Lazarus had died until he went to Bethany where Lazarus lived. On the path there, Mary and Martha, Lazarus' sisters, came to Jesus and said, Lord, if thou hast been here, our brother had not died. And then it is written, my favorite scripture, Jesus wept. Jesus Christ knew he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead. He knows everything would be okay, yet he wept with him anyways. Why? Because he understands us. He fills our sorrow and he sorrows with us. He then performs the greatest miracles and does what no one else can do. Jesus Christ is the only one who can right what is wrong undo what has been done, and rewrite every injustice. How do I know that? Because he has done that for me, and he continues to do that for me each and every day of my life. I know that no matter what happens, whether it was supposed to happen or not, everything can be made right through the atonement of Jesus Christ. In my last area, we attended mission prep almost every week for our stake, and one of the mission prep teachers was talking about a really hard trial she was going through, and she got the distinct impression Maybe your life can be better with this. I know that whatever happens, Jesus Christ can make it for our benefit. And one example of this is an experience I had in my first area. So we went to a park to do some contacts, so just calling and texting some people. And then it was almost nine, so it was time for us to go home. So we get in the car, we drive for 10 minutes, then we get to a main road, and all of a sudden our tire pressure went from 33 to zero like that. And so we pull over and... We text our roommates and we're like, hey, can you help us? Our tire went flat and this is our address. And so they came and one of my um, roommates, she's like, sisters, I think someone slashed your tire. And we're like, really? She's like, yeah, there's like a big slash in it. And I was like, oh, oh, well. And I didn't really think much of it. And then <laughs> the next day they drove us to Pet Boys, which is like a car place in Arizona. Um, and the guy, we had begun teaching him and we sent him to missionaries in his area. So he still had our phone number, and he was like, um, I think someone slashed your tire. We're like, really? He's like, yeah, there's a really big slash in it. And then he, like, explained to us how you have to be really strong to slash a tire, and a lot of times, like, the razors will break inside the tire and things like that. And I was just like, oh, well, I didn't think much of it because there wasn't, like, really any proof or anything. So I was like, well, maybe it happened, maybe it didn't. And then later that day, he sent us a text, and it was of a photo, and he said, when I was putting away your tires, I found this in your tire, and it was a razor blade in our tire. And I was like, oh my gosh, someone slashed our tire. That's crazy. And at first I was like, why would someone do that to missionaries? That's so messed up. And then I realized, oh, it's probably, they probably didn't even know we were missionaries. They probably just saw two young girls at night, 
and didn't have the best intentions. And then it finally hit me after like th two days that it was a miracle because we drove for 10 minutes on a tire that was slashed until we got to a main road. And that doesn't just happen. And so I think that's one of the coolest experiences of my mission <laughs> was having my tires slashed. <laughs> but there were many um, times on my mission, I didn't know how I could possibly go on. But I knew that even though I couldn't see the way, it would happen because Jesus Christ knows what we don't. And because of that, well, whether we realize and understand it or not, his way is always the best way. We may not always understand, but we don't have to. I know that if Heavenly Father promises something, it will happen. And something that has given me a lot of peace, especially something that I learned on my mission, is living as though Jesus Christ's promises have already been fulfilled to me and to others. One of my favorite scriptures is John 14, 27. It is Jesus speaking, and he says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And what I learned from this scripture is that even though we may have sorrow in the world, we can have peace in Christ when we turn to him and we trust in his promises. I know that he's always preparing the way before us. In Doctrine and Covenants chapter Section 84, verse 88, he has promised, for I will go before your face, I will be on your right hand and on your left, and my spirit shall be in your hearts and my angels round about you to bear you up. I know that we do not have to walk this road alone. And I gained a testimony of the scripture on my mission after my brother passed on. I remember the day he died, my district leader, and that's just kind of like, I guess I don't need to explain it. It's just another missionary. He administered a blessing of comfort to me. And as he began administering the blessing, I held the hands of my companion and two roommates. They were earthly angels around about me to bear me up. And I also distinctly and vividly remember countless angels entering the room and surrounding us. And when he finished administering the blessing, I was going to say, wow, there were so many angels here. But my roommate beat me to it. <laughs> and she said, wow, there were so many angels here. Um, I know that whether we realize it in the moment or not, Jesus Christ is always there for us. And I don't know why, but I feel like I should just share this, even though it's not in my plan. But my favorite analogy that I learned on my mission has to do with, it's in a book called Believe in Christ. And it's a story where the guy who wrote the book, before he got married, he was in a lot of debt. And his wife, she wasn't in debt. So when they got married, they merged their accounts. And all of a sudden, he didn't have a negative balance in his bank account. And... The man who wrote this story, he relates it to us in Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ never made a single mistake in his life. Um, he never has. He never will. He's completely perfect. So you can think of his bank account as infinitely positive. And it doesn't matter what we bring, whether it's negative or positive, anything times divided by, subtracted by, added to infinity is infinity. And so it's kind of like that with our covenant relationship with Jesus Christ. And so what we need to work on is just keeping our covenants with Jesus Christ. And then when we do that, we're presented before our Heavenly Father as perfect um, because his bank account is infinitely positive um, and we're presented as one. And I just felt like sharing that. That's something that's really helped me because sometimes in the past, I have really worried with perfectionism and being enough. And it helped me to realize that it's not about me. If as long as I turn to Jesus Christ and I continually try to be better and do the things he asks, then I'm gonna be enough because Jesus Christ is enough and we're doing it together. Um, but I'm so grateful for the knowledge I have of the plan of salvation. I'm so grateful for the knowledge that I have of the restoration of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I know Jesus Christ. I love him more than I love anyone and anything. He is my best friend, and I could not have served a day of my mission without him. I could not have served a minute of my mission without him. I couldn't even be up here speaking without him, and I just wanted to restate what Elder Kieran said. He truly does specialize in the seemingly impossible. He truly did come here to make the impossible possible, the irredeemable redeemable, to heal the unhealable, to write the unwritable, and to promise the impromisable. And I just want to leave you with my testimony that I know that this is Jesus Christ Church. I know it. It does not matter what anybody says because 
I have received a witness from the Spirit time and time again, and because of that, I can tell you that. I know it. And I know that the Book of Mormon is true. I absolutely adore the Book of Mormon, and it has really helped me get through so many hard times in my life and on my mission. And I know that it truly is the words of Jesus Christ, whether it's by his mouth or the words of his prophets. It's the same. I know that Russell M. Nelson is a prophet today, and I love him. Um, I know that he's inspired by God, and I know that Joseph Smith was a prophet, and I just know that Jesus Christ lives, and he loves each and every one of you with his whole entire heart, and that's why he asks us to love him with his our whole entire heart, because he loves us with it first, and I just love you all. Thank you so much for being here, and I hope you have a good rest of your Sunday, and I just say that in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. <laughs>